Hi guys, PJ here. Today I'm working on a 2016 Mazda MX-5. I'm uh, basically going to be showing you how to remove the factory fitted radio without any damage to the vehicle and obviously so that you can put an aftermarket radio in. Now before you follow this video guide I just need to point out that by following it and using it I'm held no way liable or responsible for any injury to yourself or damage to your vehicle. So on with the guide. First things first, if you're going to fit an aftermarket radio, uh, you are going to need a fitting kit. Because as you can see, this is all integral, it's all built into the fascia, so it's all moulded in. Now, I'm using this particular one here. There you go. As you can see, heat events and everything, it's all moulded in together. This is for a double DIN radio, so the big radios, yeah? This is made by a company called Auto Leads, and it's FP2605 fits Mazda MX-506 onwards. Now you can get these from Amazon, eBay, you know, most of your car shops can order them, etc. Normally in the region of about 30, 40 pounds, depending where you go for them. Lots of bits and bobs in there, look, for you to, to fit, fit the actual equipment in. Trims and surrounds and stuff. Like I say, complete fitting kit, very handy. And also, if your vehicle has controls on the steering wheel for turning the volume up and down and stuff, which a lot of them do, you're going to need an interface to make those work. They won't work if you just put in a radio on its own. I am using this one, which is made by Kinex2, and it's a CP2MZ23. There you go, or MZ23. And that has everything in there to interface into the original vehicle's wiring to make the steering controls work. A complete kit, in other words. Also, uh, that will make your main radio work as well, so you don't need any more wiring if you've got one of these. This will do the radio, the steering controls, the whole lot, everything. So, very handy to have. Normally, again, in the region of sort of 30 to 40 pounds, is depending where you go, where you shop. Same suppliers, Amazon, eBay, etc. Have a look around, Google it, you'll find it. Right, let's get on with this then. Let's put a camera light on for you. There we go. First things first, ideal tool to use on this is a plastic leverage tool, not a metal screwdriver because you will definitely damage the dashboard of the vehicle. Any plastic leverage tool will do, as long as it's quite firm. This one, um, this is made by Vibe, but you can get Bojo ones. Again, Amazon, eBay, that type of place, dashboard leverage or trim removal tool. And all you're going to do with this, quite literally, is if you look down the edge here, there's a seam. Yeah. So if you pop that in... Well, that one literally just fell off as a pop to tin. Take the side panel away, store that safely somewhere. Do the same for the other side. Pop it in. Oops, see what I'm doing. There we go. It's quite dark at the moment. It's very early in the morning on a lovely British frosty morning. So uh, the sun hasn't even come up yet. There you go. No, that one's tough. We need both hands for that one. There we go. Like I say, it's on plastic lugs, look, they just sort of push in. There we go, nice and simple. Again, put that safely out of the way. This gives you access to a couple of screws that you're going to need to access that you can see on the side there. Next up, we need to come round to the driver's side and remove this trim panel. Here's my torch. Let me get my torch for you. There you go. This one here. Okay, it's on pull, pull lugs, so we can just normally pop it off. There we go put that safely out of the way, exposing the side of the radio up there. Now you'll see a crosshead screw that the light's shining on. We can get you the angle there. We need to remove the crosshead screw. This one is actually a bolt and it is that one just there. 10 millimeter bolt, need to remove that, that one there. After you've removed the pesky bolt at the side there, which is a really awkward angle to get at, very difficult for me to show you because it's so recessed, but you remove the 10 millimeter bolt and then normally tug on each side, uh, sort of wiggle it, it's on plastic clamps. You will notice I have covered up the handbrake and the gear knob here. It's a very good thing to do because the back of your radio is metal. You don't want to scratch anything, yeah? So likewise, cover all the trim as much as possible. Dusters, rags, cardboard, take your pick. Because when you pull this out, oh, it is quite a, a hefty thing. The cabling is the only thing that's holding it now. Look at that. That's quite a, quite a beast of a radio there. And also your heater and everything's on there. So what we're going to do is pull this forward to get to the wiring behind it. 
there we go. Now the connectors are on a squeezy tab. Yeah, there's the long one, look. And it's quite literally just a case of squeezing the plastic tab and pull. It can be quite tricky. Aerial's a bayonet fit, look, so it just pushes straight in. And then you've got your huge radio. I'd say quite a bulk of a thing, really. That's why we've covered everything over. You can safely move that out of the way now, ready to install your fitting kit. Now, I will basically have to call it a day now. I haven't got time to show you how to fit the whole double din radio that I'm putting in this. I'm a bit time constricted. But guys, that's how you remove everything. Like I say, search for the parts on Amazon and eBay and you should be good to go. They're fairly straightforward and they do come with instructions. One quick thing worth to mention is if you are using the same steering interface as me, like I say, this one here, once you've plugged it in, I mean, you've got main power there, look, plugs in nice and straightforward. And... Uh, auxiliary cable there we haven't plugged in the other harness part yet but anyway because that powers it we don't want to do that yet you'll notice some dip switches on the side now if you refer to your instruction manual it'll actually show you a picture of what car so we're on mx5 here look there you go and it tells you what setting to mirror okay so a lot of people just chuck the instruction manual to one side with the packaging don't do that with this because you need it i'm fitting a pioneer radio so these four at the end here look we've set them to Pioneer. Lots of radios available there, look, Fusion, JVC, etc. Sony. So, yeah, don't throw your instructions away, guys. You are going to need it for if you're using one of these. If you're not, like I say, ignore it. Have a quick look through on the actual product you've bought. And it should have something similar because a lot of these are generic and do fit many models of the same make. And there we go, guys. That's pretty much what you're going to hope for when you've finished. As you can see, the fascia trim that I showed you earlier. That's how it fits with the heater on and how everything looks. And if you've used the interface correctly, you'll notice there that the volume goes up and down and all the other features works. Hopefully your end product looks like that. Like I say, uh, sorry I couldn't go through the whole thing, but I was really time constrained today. I've got a lot on and didn't have time to video the whole thing, but you should get the general idea. Like I say, they are plug and play and all the kits do have full instructions.